If you feel like cheating, you win it, go. Pull out your weed. You're cheating the cheat that.
And to fill in what's lacking in the body of Christ, mm -hmm. yeah. where there's lack. Yeah. I just ask all of you today, if you look at me today, you know, I wore black and white because I had, I wanted you to see Jesus. Amen. As we wear black and white on the first Sunday, but you know, I'm going to show you amazing how God is. And this is the fifth Sunday, and all my brothers and sisters in red and black, and it all ties in together yeah. in the same spirit. Yes, so as you look up this way at the pulpit and you see us as up here, look at us as one unit. And include yourself as one unit. We're not a divided unit. We're all one unit. The body of Christ. But before I talk to you, let's go before it's thrown. And Father, we just thank you for who you are, Lord. You know, it's amazing, you know, that, you know, I don't know anything, but you know, Lord, when we come to you, God, and we ask you, Lord, you give us a word. Lord, I just ask, Lord, that, that you would give us a word, Lord, give us a word for your children, Lord, that, that you would wake us up, that you would remind us, bring to memory, bring it back to mind, your God, your standards for us our lives and your standards for your children and in your house. God, help us to see your heart today, Lord, that as you are the greatest parent that ever will be, God, your love for your children, Lord, that we come together. God, that your power 
can be our least, Lord, that we, you can show us great and awesome and mighty things, Lord, when your children come together. Lord, I pray now, Lord, that I would decrease, and Lord, and you would increase. May every word come from my mouth be, thus says the Lord, and nothing of myself. God, I pray that you would prepare every mind here to understand and every heart to receive. And God, help us, Lord, to, as, the, as your word speaks to us today. God, that we hide it in our heart. And Lord, that we so walk in it. Dear God, for your praise, your honor, and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, I always, my life is transparent, you know, but I, to, just to, in this, this call to unity, you know, I just want to share with you a little bit about my life first. You know, I come from a family of 14, there were seven boys and seven girls. But one thing that all stays in my mind and, and continually when I think about my mother, because my mother used to sit us down and she used to say, there's a many of you. If y'all would stick together, there's nothing y'all can do. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. She said, there's nothing y'all can do. You know, I hear that too from the heart of God. When he calls his children to unity. You know, I reflect back on Moses when, in the Exodus when God, when the Lord was leading them, Cloud by day and fire by night, and as God would tell them to move, He would tell Moses to move them. They would all move together. Here's a million of people, and they're all moving together. And God's protection, God's power, is working in and through that community of closeness. You know, and the same thing today, you know, as we're going to look into the scriptures today. You know, I, I don't want to give you any opinion of me because I don't have an opinion. And I'm not going to take much of your time, but I'm going to, with the help of the Spirit, to be precise and clear on the standards God has set for children in the body of Christ. Amen. And I, you know, the thing is that as Paul, let me just give you an overview of Paul in the first Corinthians, you know, in the Corinthian churches, that Paul, there was a problem, there was divisions, and there was quarrels and jealousies, and all sorts of things going on in the church of Corinth. Yes, it was. And Paul wrote this letter to address it, to address that very thing. So I just want to just take a minute of your time and the time that's allotted to me to address it where these differences and divisions are hindering the growth of the church and present all the standards God sets forth for his children to live by and our code of conduct as lights that shine in a very dark place as we live out our lives here on earth mm -hmm. through and by our spirit, our faith. Unity is for the family of God, and as we will very clearly see, read and see through all scriptures, we will read today in the presence of our Lord and each other. This is not my opinion. Like I said, I don't have an opinion, but thus says the Lord. Amen. I have about six scriptures I would like to, for us to read together, and it's my prayer that after we read, have are done reading, the Lord will move on our hearts to truly love and live in unity and harmony with one another for the praise, honor, and glory of God, our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. As I said before, I wore black and white because I don't want you to look at me. When you look at this black and white, I just want you to always keep it in your vision, Jesus. Because when we wear black and white on first Sunday, it's, it's a remembrance, a reminder of all that Christ has done for us by dying on the cross on our behalf, dying the death that we deserve. 
And my brothers and sisters that's in red and black, they wearing that red and black is the symbol of the blood that was shed for us there. So you see how it all tied together in that same spirit of unity that we had in our mind, the same spirit and purpose. And that was our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's the common bond that we all have here. The common bond that we have, even if we can agree to disagree and yet love one another. Yes. Yes. So before I go any further, let us stand for the reading. I just want to break the ice. It's just one scripture that we want to read before we get into the other that Paul will open the door of what's going on in the Corinthian church. And I, I think I felt the need and a pressing need to address that very issue in this church here. That we can come together as one. And we're reading out of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Yeah. Okay. And when everyone is there, say amen. amen. And the word of God says, it says, our Paul says it to, that he says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another so that there may be no divisions among you, and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. I just want to read a little of verse 11 just to share with you what's going on there. My brother, some of a closed household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. You can have a seat. In the church. In the church. These things in the body of Christ have no place. He said that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. I, 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 I kind of get from what Paul is saying is this here. That though we have indifference, we keep our focus on the purpose. The grace of God on imperfect people. We are all imperfect people in the body of Christ here. We all fail in some kind of way. But let me just give it to you. And let me put God above you and look at his grace that he lavishes upon us as imperfect as we are. Yes. So why should we be divided? When it, they are perfect harmony. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is in perfect harmony. And if we have the Holy Spirit residing in us, we should be in perfect harmony because the Holy Spirit is leading us that way. If we don't grieve the Spirit from us. And that's what the problem was in the church. That they were grieving the Spirit from them and doing their own, by their own inclinations and things and themselves. That's why the, and through the gospel, when the preaching of the gospel self must die. Self must die. And we're going to see that too. Turn with me to Philippians. We're going to start the six, six scriptures. And we're going to read through them. I pray that y'all brought a pencil. Okay. We're going to start in Philippians chapter 2. We're going to read verses 1 through 5. And also verse 14. And I pray that this, this very thing that you would as you read, you would understand that this is an application that you examine yourself in the light of what it's saying. Yourself in the light of what it's saying, but you're going to see Christ in it. And if Christ lives in you, and you're allowing Christ to rule your life, this very thing should be a manifestation in your life. So the scripture says in, in verse 1 of chapter 2 of Philippians, it says, If 
you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, mm -hmm. if any comfort from his love, mm -hmm. if any fellowship with the Spirit, mm -hmm. if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Mm -hmm. Your attitude should be the same, be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Amen. And verse 14 says, Do everything without complaining or arguing. Do everything without complaining or arguing. Did you hear that? Yeah. But I want to draw a point for you right here. It says, if you're united with Christ. I want to draw that point right there. Because, see, being united with Christ, then if you're united with Christ according to 1 John, that if we have fellowship with Christ, we have fellowship with one another. If you're united with Christ, then you're united with each other. And that should be anyway anything that you should ever want to separate that very thing. Because let me share something with you. Yes, uh, I have earthly brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, but let me share with you, the body of Christ is the eternal family of God. Yes, it is. We're going to spend eternity together, and we can give some people here on this earth just a taste of what it's going to be like in heaven right here in this house as we walk. It says, let this attitude, some translations say, let this mind be in you. Yeah. And it finishes up and says, humble himself. To humble oneself is to place oneself in a low position upon the authority of another. Yes. To humble oneself is that I would submit to whatever direction that is, I know that it's for my good, and I have to share with you that as a pastor who is the shepherd of this church will share something with you in a direction, there should be no fighting against that very principle because you know what the pastor, in the way he's guiding you, is in the direction for your own good. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So it says, if you're united with Christ, if you have any comfort in his love, if you have any fellowship of the Spirit, capital S, <coughs> the Holy Spirit. Paul says, make my joy complete. And it's saying that, you know, as Joe is a praise team leader, Pastor Tony is the leader of this church, it says, make my joy complete by being like-minded. Being in, in perfect thoughts. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17 says, obey your leaders. That's right. Obey your leaders. Yes. 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 Pastor Tony and Joe have the, the very purpose of the good of the church, the good of each individual. Yes. There should be no quarreling or fighting. A bickering. It should all be for the glory and the praise of God and the encouragement and the, and the edifying of the body of Christ in this house. Amen. That's right. Amen. Let's read a couple more scriptures here. Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 16, and we're going to read also 13. 18. I just said that the Word of God is going to be the, the standard, the, 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 the whole standard here. That no one would say that Brother Gary said, but you're going to hear, thus says the Lord. We're going to start in verse, uh, chapter 12, verses 9 through 16 real quick. And when you're there, say amen. amen. Love must be sincere. Yeah. Hate what is evil. Mm. Cling to what is good. Mm -hmm. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Yeah. Honor one another above yourself. Mm -hmm. 
Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual prayer in serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not be conceited. Conceitment is a very bad place. You know, pride is the first sin, and it happened in heaven. And it was conceitment because of his beauty. He was a beautiful angel. And he thought he had it all going on. I just want to share with you that spirit that, that works in that very principle. Conceitment. You look in the mirror and then you accept on self. You have no eyes for nothing else, no one around you. Everybody else is in a low spot, but you in a high spot. It has no place in the body of Christ. Because how many of us know that God is the other person versus God? God is about other people. He died for others. He didn't die for himself. He died for us. You see the big picture? Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. In chapter 13, verses 8 through 10, we can look at that right quick. And it says this, it says, Let no debt remain outstanding except the continual debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. The commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet. And whatever other commandments there are, that there may be, are summed up in this one group. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to his neighbor. Therefore, love is a fulfillment of the law. The motivation of everything that I do, the motivation should be, motive, be the motive of love. It should be love, especially especially to the household of faith. Especially because the Bible is just really serious about that very thing. Especially to the household of faith. Because how can we win others to Christ if someone passed that door, here we are bickering and arguing and going through changes and there's a man, a woman that passed there and they're and the Spirit is moving upon their hearts. And they come to the door and stop. And here we are arguing and bickering. Guess what? It's enough out there. The world is out there. And they see it. It's okay. I might as well go back out there. This ain't nothing right here. But boy, it's us because we're giving account for it. See, we need to be aware of these things. Because how many of us know the Lord sees? He sees. Yes, yes. <coughs> so love, it should be motivated. Everything we do should be motivated to love one another, especially to the household of faith. And the Bible is clear on that. In First John, John, the Apostle John says, he says, by this you'll know that you're past from death to life because you love the brothers. You'll know by that hallmark, that very thing that you have passed for spiritual death and spiritual life. By the hallmark. But although, you know, the thing is, we're not perfect. But and there's a time that we fail. But in our failure, shouldn't it come to a place that I come to my senses? That as the Spirit moves upon my spirit and, and breaks me, then I say, you know, that's wrong. Let me go to my brother and sister and reconcile. And if you don't do that, and you said you come into the house of God, week after week, week after week, and you hold on to these things, and you come into this house with that same thing in your heart, and say I'm a Christian, and you act out in that kind of a way. Let me share something with you, that you're affecting this whole church 
The Bible says a little leaving, leaving a whole lump of dough. It affects the whole thing, the whole body, the whole power of what goes on that God wants to do to his children at this church. We need to understand that one sin can affect it. You know, also in Romans chapter 12, it says, Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Yeah. Do not avenge yourself, but leave room. Yeah. So what you do is this, that if someone has offended you, even in the body of Christ, be quick to forgive. Ain't God quick to forgive? Yeah. And then when you're quick to forgive, you, re you release the person to God, yeah. and you take the burden of off of yourself. Yeah. Because you can make yourself a prisoner. By holding on to these things. <laughs> and these things can affect everybody that, that come in contact with you. So in the cause of unity, if unity, unity I see is as being one unit. You know, you take an electrical system, right? And they got an electrical unit. There's this one unit and the current flows to that one unit. You get the picture? As we become one unit and united as one, then the current flows through this unit. God's power flows through it. Yes, it does. But I never saw nowhere in the Bible where God works. God's power doesn't work where division is. Guess who's at work there? Where there's division, guess who's at work? Plain and simple. That's his biggest gun. If he can divide you, he can come. So let's look at Galatians chapter 6 next. Yeah. Like I said, the word of God is going to be the very fact of the speech here. Yeah, and you know, so, you know, we can do our research and everything about these things that we know is right in the word. When you get home, you can just go there and let it become an integral part of it. Let the Lord, let the Lord in your heart that I want to live in harmony and love with my brother because I'm supposed to be in harmony and love. I'm supposed to be in, in, in harmony with you. Because God's word is a standard for our living. Where we fail, we just get up and knock the dust off. If you if there's an offense in the house of God, go to your brother and sister. And, 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 and reconcile and make it right. Don't live in that kind of a way. We have a purpose. The time that we're living in, uncertain times, you never know, but the church is the light that shines out of this dark place around the world, no matter what it goes. And if we if we are light that shine, we don't want nothing to dim it by our own conduct. Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. And it says this, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, if we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. Now hear this, to all people now, especially, especially to those who belong to the household of faith. I just want to draw a picture so you can get the whole picture of what God is saying. He said especially. Yeah, we do good. Our conduct should be the light that shine out there. But let me share, when it comes to the body of Christ, if you got a problem, an issue with your brothers and sisters in Christ, guess what? You got a problem with God. You don't maybe you just haven't, if you can't let it go, and you say I'm a Christian, and you keep having something that you can't rest at home, and is in your heart and pounding in your heart about something about your brothers and sisters in Christ in the church. Yeah. Bible says it is, and I just tell the truth. He says, maybe you need to examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. Because I'm sure that where God's spirit is, the love goes up. Because the Bible says it too in Romans chapter 5. He said God has poured out his love into our hearts. Amen. I love my brothers and sisters in the church and God is my witness to it. And, I, and the, the sacrifices that I have to make, that I would make, I would make. I wish, you know, the thing is, I work long hours on my job. But I talk to the Lord about it. I say, Lord, maybe I need to go full time in the church. Because the very fact that there's times I get out very late and I can't get 
Church studies. I want to be a part of the very thing. But I do need Monday night Bible study, but I'd be very tired and happy. But the thing is, during the week, but I, I myself, I love to be that being an encouragement to my brothers and sisters. Yeah. He said, let us not become weary in doing good. See, what that's saying to me that somebody do me some wrong and then I, oh, I ain't doing that nothing. And that's, you know, I mean, this is the body of Christ. Continue to do good. No God, no matter how we feel, don't he continue to do us good? He continues to do good by us. All the time. No matter how we feel. That's why I see amazing grace. You know, I see in my flesh, and I see my failures. I'll be driving my truck, and I say, man, how amazing is grace? Because the fact is, I know good well that I, somehow or another, I fail. I fail all the time. But God is steady good to me, in spite of myself. So why can't we be good to each other, in spite of their imperfections? Because we all are perfect. That's why I keep myself before God, because I can see yeah. right there. God in his holiness and me and my unholiness and failures. But I see his grace, that he imparted his righteousness to my account. Not that I'm righteous in my flesh, but he is there, and he's saying the good by me. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 through 15. I pray that y'all take these scriptures down that you can study them at home. Because we have a purpose. And we got to get it right, y'all. But God's power, it's time. If you sit and focus upon yourself, take the spotlight off of you, put it upon Christ. You know, I sit at home sometimes and I see, I hold me old mind. I be saying, and then all of a sudden something in my mind says, put your mind on Christ. So, you're self-centered. Be Christ-centered. And, and I say, man, that is something. I, you know, when I read self-centered in the Bible, I'm thinking being self-centered, but the Spirit told me, sitting on the stool in my house, being self-centered. Because you're focusing upon your values instead of the grace of Christ. See, that does me that way. I, I, I said, man, that's crazy. That's what self-centered is. You centered it on yourself. Centered it up on Christ. He's forgiven. He's died for you. That's what we do. And I pray you praise in yourself. May the grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Because if you're proper, if you're really being proof it up in yourself, you can see the failures you know, in you. But you can see God working in your life every day. So if, if I see that in me, right? Mm -hmm. And I know it's got to be for my brothers and sisters in Christ. So that makes a grow, that makes a growing love for my brothers and sisters because we are all one and the same, and He is God's grace. You see? So unity to be unified because we want to see. God said, "I will show you great and mighty things," and He will. See, he'll show us, he'll make our mouth stand like this here. We stick together and see. We stick together and see. Yeah. God have our, our mouth be. Yes, sir. He's awesome. Because he's waiting on us to come to be unity. We should be urging Christ back quick because he's waiting for the last one to come to faith. Amen. And it's our job and our duty as a unit to do that, to usher in that very thing. And how are we going to do it if we divide it? We in the world, but we not of it, y'all. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. You, ain't it clear? The word of God, the sentence of God, ain't it clear? Yes. Everything from, we didn't read the very thing to live in harmony with one another. Live in peace, love one another. And that's all we've been hearing, right? Yeah, as a unit. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. It says this. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That's a hard thing for people to do. Submit to one another. I ain't submit to nobody. Yeah, I ain't submit to no one. But the Bible tells you to submit to one another. So if I don't submit, submit is a willingness. It's not a force. 
It, it's a, you make that choice. A wife. Y'all know I love my wife deeply, y'all. I love her deeply. I thank God for the grace to love my wife and her imperfections because the body of Christ is typically in a mystery of the same thing of marriage. But submission is a two side. It's not just wife. The Bible tells the wife to submit to the husband. Guess what? But the husband should be more submissive because he should, he should die for the wife. For himself. Plain and simple. Dying for the wife. Dying. And that's the same thing about it. Did Christ do that? Yes. So submit to one another. It didn't say because of you. It didn't say because you feel like it. It said submit to one another out of reverence. Now check this word out. Out of reverence for Christ. Because he's watching you. Because of who he is. See, to rip to, out of reverence for him. Lord, I do this because I love you. Yeah. It ain't about me, Lord. It's about you. And when it's about the Lord, guess what it does? It goes out to another. Yeah. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Here you is. Here the Lord is. And you, out of reverence for him, yeah. it goes and it blesses another. Yeah. Amen. So that's what we should, that should be the very thing in the body of Christ. This should be all the problems. And I just want to share this with you as the Spirit is leaving. I need the ladies to hear this very clearly. That you can pay attention to it. And that you think about it. Today the enemy is attacking women today. And my sisters in suffering Christ, we in this church protect our sisters. Because there's some things that can get blinders in our life that cause us not to see it. We are those of us that the Spirit moves and we know. We let our sisters and we let our brothers know. We are watching. And we protect our sisters. We love our sisters. But I'm going to make it aware. Because we, the devil doesn't have no victory. None. In here. That's what it's all about, about being a unit. We suppose the men are supposed to be watching. Amen. And we're supposed to not look over our sisters that's trying to yeah. get next to them. We're supposed to look at them as being protect our protection. Yes. Amen. To carry on. Yes. So as that goes in a call in unity, see all that goes. Now let me share something in the family. Let's say being a good family. You see your brother or sister going in the wrong direction. You're going to just let them go in the wrong direction? No. Or you're going to see something that comes in store to be a harm from that is harm. Wait a minute. Come on. Hey, come on. And, put them, and take them and put them under your wing and pull them away from them. Yes. Not that they're doing anything wrong, but you see an enemy. You can see the enemy. You can see him. See, so the thing is, is that's the very thing. But he wants us to, as a watchman, to sound the front. Don't sit back. No. Oh, it ain't none of my business. Oh. No, yes, it is my business because let me tell you something. You're going to give an account. We are, we are all account, held accountable for one another. And yes, you, yes, it is your business. And Christ's going to hold you accountable if you don't bring it to their attention because he's going to tell you, hey, you saw this coming and I, and I trusted you in your spirit. Why didn't you go tell them? Why didn't you go tell them? Why didn't you? See? So it's just that way, brother. It's just that way that we care for one another. First Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9 and 4 and 11. Let's read that in the last scripture uh, before I give you a closing scripture. But I just wanted to make sure that in, the, that in my spirit that to love and as being your brother in this family that I make it aware that my heart desire is for us to live in unity to let God's power this church sits right in a very deep place and it's up to us for God to reach those out there he wrecked some of us out there I'm one that he moved that he delivered out there and I'm not going to sit myself and see others suffer to the very fact 
He, he, just, he just, he's amazing. He delivered me from it and put me right back in his church and you think. Yeah, that's right. That's right. When you see Brother Gary, you just know it's a lot to go with Brother Gary. There's a story behind it. Oh, yeah. But there's a heart of the matter, too. I'm thankful. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's all right, Pastor. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9 first, okay? Finally, all of you, say that. All of you. Live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic. Be sympathetic. Love is brother. Be compassionate. Be compassionate. And humble. Do not repay evil with evil. Or insult with insult. But bless it. Because of this, I was called so that I may inherit a blessing. You see, God is amazing. He catched he that. He put that right on the end of it. So the promise will be right there for you. That's the promise. God put that promise right there so I can inherit a blessing. God's got a blessing for you. In the closing scripture, he's going to for sure say that. He's going to let you know that in the spirit of unity, yeah, he has a blessing there. Yeah. So, it says there above, he's saying all of you, not some of us. And he's talking to the body of Christ, y'all. He's talking to Christians. He's not talking to unbelievers. He's talking to believers. He said all of you. It's the reason God is saying that. Because he, God's power, God, God is, is going to work it out there. He's going to work it out. He just said to God and inherit a blessing. Amen. That we can be blessed in this church. Yes. Yes. If we'll just do that, be sympathetic. Yes. Love one another as brothers and sisters. Yes. Tenderly love one another. Yes. Sincerely love one another. Yes. Deeply love one another. Yes. Yes. See? I love the word of God. It's just clear when it comes to things and standards for this church, for the body of Christ. You know, there's people, there's brothers and sisters here. I'm going to share some with you. And, and, and I need you to think about this. You know, they really have some things they're going through. And they want to talk to someone. But they look at the face of their brothers and sisters, and some of us seem like we're not approachable. We look like we're not approachable. We have to think about these things. The Bible tells me that what I go through, he tells me, says, know that your brothers and sisters are going through the same thing. So make them comfortable. Loving. I'm thankful that people, I work for the university mission, but I'm thankful that people come, even in the church, they come to me and they share with what's going on. Because I, I, I make myself approachable. The people don't my brothers and sisters. Amen. 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 Like my sister Terry over in class. They come to me in a minute and talk to me about everything. My sister sitting back there. If the thing is you make yourself approachable, yes, right. then, then people can, they can trust you, they share with you. And then I can say, well, you know what, man, I'm, I'm going through the same thing. Right. Yeah. And I can be a blessing to them and share what God is doing in me and what he's done with me. But if I got a frown on my face in the church about it right, angry Christian, talking right. about who wants to be around with an angry Christian and share some with an angry Christian and get mad. Yeah. You got to think about these things. These things should not be. Yes, right. Amen. Amen. So finally, all of you, be living on me. Be sympathetic. Yes. Sympathetic is that very thing. That word to sympathize with somebody else with their going through. To sympathize. Oh, that's hard. Just to be there to listen. You say, well, I've been sitting down, I didn't know my sister or brother going through this. That's showing sympathy to sympathize with them. Yes. 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 Yes.
but he did it to me. I'm gonna do it to them. You gotta repay nobody for you. That's right. And if somebody say something wrong to you, or right. insult you, you don't have to insult that. Don't eat us. Don't eat us. Don't eat us. The Bible is clear on it. Right. If you want to inherit a blessing, God say that you may inherit a blessing. Right. A lot of us miss our blessing because of that very thing. Be sympathetic, y'all. Yeah. I, I, I want to be the first one. I, I just want to be the first one to say, you know, I thank God for my pastor. And all of you that know Pastor Tony, you know Pastor Tony is a loving, yes, he is. very concerned, sympathetic yes. man. Yes, my pastor loves us no matter what we do. And if you go through something, he's going to be there for you. Amen. Amen. Brother Joe. Very sympathetic in, 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 in everything he do. He cares about everyone in his face. What you go through, Joe, no, Joe cares about everyone in this church. Amen. And every man and woman in this church that's called by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ should be willing and glad to submit upon this. Make their job a joy instead of a burden. If we're a unit, we're a body, that's our leaders that God has placed before us. Make it a joy instead of a burden for them and they can have a day. Be so they can sit at home and they can be so thankful in themselves and how that they that what they know and their knowledge they teach us and, and everyone is being thankful and show them consideration for all that they teach us. And that's the most important thing in the, in, the, in the house of God. God says, touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. And you better understand that very thing. That if you're going through something, you better, maybe you need to get it right. Maybe if you're not, if you feel something inside you, that the, the spirit is uncomfortable. We got to get it right, y'all. Confess your sins one to another. Confess your fault. Yeah, I was holding on to this, and I know I, I think it's wrong. After hearing that message from Brother Gary, you know, hey, whoever, if y'all got a problem with anyone, make it right today before God that this church can come. Make it right today. I pray that it's right before you leave out this house. Make it truly right between your brothers and sisters. And in my last scripture, I'm going to read this out of 133. Psalm 133. God has a word for you. In this very thing of a call to you. And it says these words. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. For it's like the precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robe. It is, as, it is as if the dew of Hermon was falling on Mount Zion. But there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. There is the promise of blessing in the spirit of unity. It said it is there that God commanded blessing. When God commands a blessing, y'all, we come together and God commanded it. And what God says out of his mouth is going to come to pass. How blessed it is when the brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. For God's going to bless you. Even life forevermore, y'all. The spirit of unity. Why? Well, you know, my mother, when my mother was 14 children, and she used to sit us down and, and, and she said that there's so many of y'all that stick. Ain't nothing y'all can do if y'all can't sit together. And I'm going to say this very thing to all of us here from the heart of God. Ain't nothing God won't do if we'll stick together. Yes. Ain't nothing God won't do if we will just stick together. So before I call my sister up here, I just want to tell you, say if, you, if, you, if you have been united with Christ, this is time right now that those of us, and I want to share this with you, if you know that you know that you haven't dealt with your sins before God, it's a time right now to be a part of this family, of eternal family, whatever you're going through that you can come to and get in a warm embrace 
first get embraced by Christ, but that work that he did upon, upon Calvary's cross for you. Sister Geraldine. Amen. 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 Amen.